Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'm going to discuss what little we know from the face-to-face -face private meeting between Macron and Johnson at COP26 and how it could lead to a de-escalation of the Brexit fishing row with both sides claiming victory back home, which is of course what matters to both leaders. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, UK authorities have refused to honour their end of the deal with regards to fishing licences for French fishermen and now Macron has threatened unilateral economic sanctions against Britain to begin tomorrow if the situation isn't resolved. I'll be honest, I expect this to be resolved pretty quickly. Um, it may not, but I do expect it for a couple of reasons, but it remains intensely interesting because, and th this will apply to, to the various things I'll want to discuss this week, not because of the French fishing row. I, it's really not a big enough issue for it to have lasting damage to either side. I just see it as a precursor to the much wider row later this month. And in fact, it may well be that both sides are using it as a as a, a dress rehearsal for later this month when the Northern Ireland Protocol is expected to take another big twist. But the fishing round for now. Because what this may well highlight is something I talked about last week. Britain can't win a trade war with the EU. It's ridiculous. It can't even win one with a single significant member of the EU, like France, for example. But Boris Johnson can win a trade war. And this is the danger, that he instigates trade wars or just conflicts in general that Britain suffers badly from, but from which Johnson gains political victories. I mean, look at Brexit. Incredibly damaging. I mean, no single trade war is going to do as much damage as Brexit in general has. Johnson has politically profited from Brexit. He doesn't care how much he tanks the economy. He doesn't care how many jobs are lost, how badly our healthcare or justice system collapses, how much effluence is floating around our rivers and coastlines. He only cares that enough of the public think that it would be even worse if he were not Prime Minister. He just wants to be Prime Minister. So popularity amongst key voters is the only thing he cares about. So whenever there is a conflict between his government and the EU, or just a single EU member, as in this case, Johnson just needs an outcome that allows the media, that is absolutely willing to do this, allows the media to hail his great victory. This fishing row gives him exactly that. You know, when I talked about this, I got some comments going, Phil, Phil, you're not getting it from the French's point of view. You know, Macron had to act tough to gain some of the popular vote himself. I certainly don't understand French politics as well as I understand British politics, but I understand that. That's clear. I get that. I said as much. But this is still Macron playing into Johnson's hands. You know, he could have acted tough without some of the threats he made. If Johnson wins popular support out of this conflict, he will be emboldened to keep doing it. And I say this not as a criticism of Macron at this point, but as a warning to the wider EU when they have to take coordinated action against the suspension of large parts of the Northern Ireland Protocol. Because they're already considering that and they need to make sure they understand what actions will work and what actions will not work. Because they're normally very good at trade wars, but the normal logic will not apply to Johnson. But I'll explain how this victory of Johnson's works for the first point. There's lots to talk about. So at the weekend, Macron met with Johnson for a private meeting. Yesterday, I think it was, uh, half an hour at COP26. Afterwards, the French side said that they had agreed a way to de-escalate the crisis. Oh, that's good. Excellent. But then the UK side, when they were asked, said, oh, we don't know what they're talking about. Well, well, no, well. And then when they were pushed to confirm, oh, so are you denying that an agreement was reached, the UK said, no, 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 no we're, not, we're, not, we're not denying that agreements have been reached. We're just, we're just implying it he very heavily. Now, if no agreement had been reached, why imply it, but not explicitly say so when asked? Let us speculate. Let us say that an agreement has been reached. Let us say that Johnson has agreed that, well, you know, maybe the particular way in which these French fishermen have been asked to jump through hoops is inappropriate. It's certainly not what was considered in part of the deal. And there's probably a better way for them to prove their claim to the licences. So Johnson agrees to sort it out. 
The licenses are issued over the next few weeks, say. Eh? As a result of this agreement, Macron suspends his threats on the trade sanctions that he was going to impose from tomorrow. He has the option of reimposing them if Johnson breaks his promise again. But the situation is that tomorrow those sanctions are not applied as the French give the UK a few weeks to make good on their word. Remember, this is just speculation. I don't, at the time I'm recording this, I don't know. But it's, it is based on the notion that the UK are refusing to deny that an agreement was reached. So it's not far out there speculation. It is based on something that was reported yesterday. So the French don't impose the sanctions. The French media hail the breakthrough and Macron wins his victory back home. Johnson has agreed to sort this mess out. Fine, great. But the British media also hail Johnson's victory. They point to the fact that France didn't follow through on their threats. They say to their readers, look, look, they are threatening all these things. They haven't done them. They don't point to Johnson's capitulation because, in all honesty, how could they? He hasn't publicly changed his policy. Even in a few weeks, when those licences are issued, the UK authorities will deny it had anything to do with this agreement with Macron. They'll just say that the French fishermen came up with the correct paperwork and that there had been never any intention to unfairly deny them licences. The British press will make it look like France has backed down. Either because it was always bluffing and good old Boris with his steel backbone face down the bluff or because other EU member states talked France out of their reckless action. Now, in some ways, you'd say, who cares? In the normal run of events, you'd go, this is how things work. France gets what they want. Macron gets his plaudits back home. Johnson also gets what he wants in a similar domestic boost in the polls. And it could be a good one. <laughs> the shit floating down our rivers was all over the news last week. All over the news last week. What happened at the end of last week? The Conservatives went up two points in the polls. What? <laughs> so imagine the poll boost he'll get when he wins a war with France, for goodness sake, because that's how it'll be billed in the press. So this sort of outcome, actually, as I say, it's the normal way of resolving international disputes. You create a face-saving way out for both sides where each can claim victory back home. But where this differs is that this isn't just about one thing. This isn't just a thing and then you move on and you're back to being the best of friends and all the rest of it. The consequences of Brexit are dire for Britain's economy and living standards, to say nothing about our reduced international standing. Johnson needs to avoid as many consequences as possible and like any populist leader, he needs to invent enemies. Those enemies are to be found in the EU. So he will keep doing this. He has to keep generating conflict with the EU where he engineers victories. North Korea-style victories, but still victories. As far as the British press are concerned, they'll be real victories. Various diplomats and politicians in the EU have said that they are sick of the way the UK government is carrying on. But something like this only emboldens them to keep doing it. Invent a phony conflict with the EU, whole or part, over something that makes no difference to them, draw threats or sanctions, back down in private, then the sanctions are not applied and you claim you face them down. Boris Johnson's reputation as the iron man in charge of Britain is enhanced and his regime is further entrenched. Remember, his government succeeds not because people think they're making their lives better. Of course they're not. They can't even convince Brexit supporters that that is happening. It's because they believe that the alternatives are too weak and would make their lives even worse. You see the usual thing. Oh, yeah, but imagine if Jeremy Corbyn were in charge. Or imagine if Keir Starmer were in charge. Oh, thank God we've got Boris. It might be crap, but good God, it could be even worse. You know, it is entrenching a dysfunctional government of a powerful country which is leading to a dysfunctional world order. Johnson is of the belief that he has an advantage in the fact that he has no regard for the rules or the interests of his own people. Because it allows him to raise the stakes higher than the other side. Because the other side cannot gamble with the prosperity of their own people. They'll sometimes break the law. Other countries do sometimes break international law. They don't really like to be seen to be doing it. But they will not gamble with their own businesses. Because they are politically accountable. Because their media is not going to let them get away with this nonsense. Johnson backing down to the EU, or anyone doesn't end his, his political reign. I've lost count of how many times he's backed down already. I suspect he's backed down again this week, hence this video, although that's not certain. I don't know that yet. I suppose I will in the next couple of days. But while he can give the impression 
that he is actually winning as opposed to running away, he will keep retaining just enough popularity to win elections and he will keep causing major headaches for those with whom we should be allies. So what can be done? I'm actually not sure what will be done. Like you could say, so well, what if France then said, okay, that's great that you've agreed to sort this out. We're still going to apply the sanctions because you haven't done it yet, but we will lift the sanctions as soon as those licenses are issued. But that's not really reasonable. Like, if the UK have said that they're going to change the way they deal with the applications and that in three weeks' time it'll all be sorted, a reasonable person, a reasonable onlooker would say, well, you shouldn't actually apply the sanctions. Give them the few weeks to make good on it. Why cause you both sides harm in this? You know, give them the few weeks. If they don't, if they break the word, then fine. So unlike the UK, which is happy to be a pariah state while they wait for Trump to take charge again, France cannot afford to annoy their international partners. And these sanctions hurt EU jobs as well as British ones. As for the EU, when we start really taking the piss with the Northern Ireland Protocol, which I'm going to be ramping up to uh, as the week goes on, I don't know. I see a lot of people are saying that the EU have had enough and that the response would be robust. And, and maybe it will. But then I think, what is the greatest threat to the EU right now? It's not Britain. It's Poland and Hungary, isn't it? Britain is no threat to the EU outside of it. We're just a pain in the ass. If Poland and Hungary continue to get the benefits of membership without sticking by their obligations, they will have done what the UK could never achieve by leaving. Like the UK said they were going to get all the benefits of membership with none of the obligations. You don't get that by leaving. You don't get the benefits of membership if you're outside it. Poland and Hungary are getting the benefits of membership, but they're still not following the rules inside it. And that will lead to the collapse of the EU. That will genuinely lead to the collapse of the EU if it's allowed. That is very serious. So they have to be made to either follow their obligations or they must be denied the benefits of membership. So is the EU Commission taking a tough stance against their wayward colleagues? No. A lot of talk, but there's nothing being done. So if they will not take strong action against a genuine threat to the EU... What makes us think they will to an annoying third country that's swimming in its own shit? But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.